Oh, goody. All right, what's up, everybody? It is Zombies here again, and today I've got an updated Battle Tower uh, Battle Points farming guide for you. So I'm going to show you my Pokemon here that I'm using for this uh, new team. I'm actually, using Infernape, Salamance, and Starmie. Pretty simple uh, EVs on all of them, just maxing out that speed and whatever uh, attack stat is more useful for them. So Salamance and Infernape are doing attack, and Starmie we're doing special attack. And yeah, it's pretty straightforward. We're running the choice uh, specs on the Starmie, choice band on the Infernape, and a focus sash on the Salamance to avoid any pesky one-hit KOs. Now this is actually the team I used to beat the Tower Tycoon at level 49, so or battle 49 or whatever you want to call it. Um, so if you're looking for a decent team to unlock Master with, this is a pretty decent one um, from my experience with it. And if you're just trying to do some simple farming, this is more than good enough. So basically for this method of farming, um, kind of what I've seen is one of the more effective things to do, as I mentioned in my last video, is basically you just want to get to the Tower Tycoon fight, beat him, and then just immediately reset your run. So you get to him, once you beat him, you get your 20 battle points, and then you just re-enter the battle tower. You can actually run from the battle. It'll ask you to confirm. You hit yes, and then you will restart at battle number one, and then you can battle through up again to number 21, fight him again, get 20 battle points, rinse and repeat. And for me, that is what I found to be one of the faster methods for doing this, because if you do want to just grind the battle tower, um, it's just not very point effective to try and grind it in the normal battle tower because once you beat the tower tycoon that first time the pokemon you start going up against definitely get a lot stronger and a lot uh just a lot better in general the teams you face so it can be hard to uh continuously keep that win streak going um but this team was actually good enough to get all the way there however it's not really worth it to me because you really don't get that much more in the way of points. Like, yeah, you get a little bit more battle points for your, uh, for climbing against those trainers, but it's just like, it's really not worth it. Um, I looked at the numbers and if you really just want to farm fast, just farm up to this first fight, quit, rejoin, pretty simple. So we're going to show you the first fight here and how I deal with it with this team. But we, we have a pretty decent team against what he's got here. Honestly, as long as you have stuff for mainly the Dragonite and the Milotic, you'll probably be fine. Here, also, I should note, it is random uh, what he leads with. There is not a consistent lead, so you can't really plan around that. That's why I like having a Mon with some kind of uh, switch out move. For my last video, I was using Rotom. Now I have Infernape with U-Turn. And... Now we're going to switch over to the Salamance. Looks like in this fight I actually had the Life Orb on Salamance still, but I did actually end up uh, swapping that out for a Focus Sash, which uh, when we get to the uh, level 49 battle, we'll see uh, he's actually rocking that because it is. I found it is much more useful than a Life Orb when you're actually trying to climb all the way up to battle 49 because um, there are a fair amount of other dragons and ice moves um, that you can run into and that can basically one hit your salamence a lot of the time so being able to either swap into a dangerous attack or being able to take one dangerous attack and get up a dragon dance before sweeping with outrage or earthquake is really nice and um, I actually am rocking aerial ace on my salamence because in my first attempt of getting to battle 49 I actually lost to a Pokemon spamming double team and that was very frustrating so I decided I wanted to have a move that could not miss and Aerial Ace kind of fit the bill there. Our Pyrrhier was able to take out our Mence but our Mence did its job taking out the Dragonite and now my Lodic is out so we are going to have to switch out here because we are locked into our Surf. But again, this first fight really isn't super hard as long as you bring some mons that are prepared for it. Um, the most annoying thing about it is probably this Milotic uh, that spams sleep and whatnot. And as you can see, they, they one hit KR8, but it's not really gonna matter here because Starmie's gonna be more than good enough to, uh, to finish off the job here. 
So yeah, the first fight really isn't that bad in my opinion. Um, the, the harder part is actually getting up to Battle 49 and Battle 49 itself, I'd say, is arguably a bit harder than this first fight. However, if you're just looking to be effective in farming battle points, don't even worry about getting all the way up to Battle 49 because it is really not worth your time unless you want to grind Master Battles. If you think that's something that's fun, that could be fun for you to do, like I do, uh, worth doing it. But if you're just doing it purely for the battle points to get the items you might need for competitive battling, it's really not worth it to, uh, to farm it up like that. I even did some testing after you beat the uh, the Tower Tycoon at Fight 49, and it's weird. It actually resets basically. So once you, uh, we're actually gonna see the level the Battle 49 fight here as well. But once you actually beat this fight, it basically resets like level one. You're still on a streak, but the Pokemon you'll be running into are un unevolved for the next two or three rounds. And so it's kind of weird. Um, you also, I believe, get less battle points again, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, which is really, really weird to me. Like, I don't understand why the system works that way. Maybe it's to kind of encourage you to do the master system once you've unlocked it. I don't really get it. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna do the level 49 fight here. Basically, Palmer has a different team here, um, starting off with the Regigigas. And that Regigigas is actually packing a berry to reduce fighting damage. So, unfortunately, that is a little bit annoying against what we've got here in Infernape. But I think we end up going for it anyway because it's still going to deal a lot of damage. Um, yeah, so we go for it. It's not going to kill because of the berry. Yep. And you can see that right there it goes for the crush grip but the crush grip actually doesn't kill us either and i believe that's actually relevant later into this fight so we are able to take out the regigigas which is really big and yeah the regigigas due to its slow start definitely not as as scary as it could be then out comes heatran which is another uh, good kind of switch in for us because we can just keep spamming close combat here and look at that boom one hit ko Heatran, easy peasy. So Infernape's really good at this fight. Now his last team member here is Cresselia, and I actually uh, make a misclick um, when I after I switch out here, which really almost screwed me. Um, so I actually end up going to, I believe I go to Salamence, and you can see I have the, the sash on it now. So I swap into Salamence, which is what I wanted to do. Uh, keep the Infernape for later, just in case. But here I was thinking, oh, I've got this in the bag. It's going to be super easy. One, one V3. And you'll see I, I hit Earthquake. I am aware Cresselia has Levitate. I did not mean to press Earthquake. And then I, then I see Cresselia start to set up. And I'm just like, oh, God. Because I, uh, I forgot this is kind of a, a setup Cresselia. And so now it's subbing. And it's like, oh, no. Am I really about to get, like, set up swept by a Cresselia? <laughs> But no, um, we we are able to kind of get out of it and turn it around here. But it was a lot closer than it needed to be because of that misclick. So I did want to point it out. But yeah, after this fight, you really just want to have some good, uh, at least one good fighting move or fighting type Pokemon. Um, because between Heatran and Regigigas, it'll just help clean them up pretty instantly. Um, and then as long as you have something else that can kind of deal with Cresselia here, you should be good. Uh, do be careful about having a kind of special heavy team, as with Calm Mind, this Cresselia can set up pretty easily if you don't have a physical way to threaten it. And as we can see here, I was trying to kind of fight through the confusion. They get my Salamence down to 18 health, and they are still behind a sub, so I'm, I'm freaking out a little bit here. We're going to pop the sub, and I think they're going to take down Salamence. And the only two I have left are, I have Starmie, but Starmie's not going to be super great because they've already started to set up the Calm Mines. And then I also have Infernape, but he is rocking very, very little health. So I actually opt to go for the AP here because I know I'm going to be faster and I'm hoping that U-Turn is going to give me enough damage to kind of like two or three hit kill. Um, do get a good switch out here into Starmie who should be able to deal enough damage to make the uh, the U-turn 
a uh, two hit kill, which is pretty much what we need. Luckily, Starmie is psychic and resists, so that's pretty good. But yeah, this team felt really, really solid for me going through uh, the battle tower. So if you are looking for something to get up to and like beat this uh, battle 49 fight to get master, this is what I would recommend. Um, the, the team I used last time was also decent too, but I think this one kind of covered a few weaknesses that the old one didn't, such as uh, dealing with Pokemon that have evasion boosting moves or evasion lowering moves, because Salamence, Aerial Ace, you just don't really have to worry about that. And unfortunately in the Battle Tower, that is something you have to worry about. But we actually were lucky enough to get it down to just enough health here to where we can KO it collect our win, unlock master, but again, if you're just trying to farm battle points, just do the simple method. Go to fight 21, beat the tower tycoon, immediately concede, you'll get your 20 points, and then you also get another 3 for the 2 leading up to it, so it's 26 points total, and that seemed to be the fastest way to get it for me. So yeah, that's uh, those are the main things I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully uh, this was useful to you if you're trying to grind out the battle tower like I was. Like This is basically what I did for my ability capsule. I know a lot of people are farming to get that. So I wanted to put out an updated version of this video to hopefully help people out with that. But yeah, if you enjoyed it, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.